All right, let's jump into this first story from Rolling Stone. FBI raids star ABC News producer's home. Emmy-winning producer James Gordon Meek had his home raided by the FBI. His colleagues say they haven't seen him since. And this was apparently back in April. Look at this. At a minute before 5 a.m. on April 27th, ABC News' James Gordon Meek fired off a tweet with a single word, facts. The network's national security investigative producer was responding to a former CIA agent, Mark, how do you say this, Polymeropoulos, take that the Ukrainian military, with assistance from the U.S., was thriving against Russian forces. Polymeropoulos' tweet, filled with uh, acronyms and indecipherable, uh, indecipherable to the layperson, like ITPs, UW, and EW, was itself a missive from the Washington Post Pentagon reporter, Dan Lamont, blah, 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 blah. Okay, really what the story comes down to is, uh, I think we have this tweet here. Let's just go through the, the, the quick bullet points on this one. Outside ABC News' James Gordon Meek's apartment, a surreal scene was unfolding, and his storied career was about to come crashing down. Multiple sources familiar with the matter say the Emmy-winning producer was the target of an FBI raid. None of his neighbors with whom Rolling Stone spoke with have seen him since. His neighbors haven't even seen him. An ABC representative tells Rolling Stone he resigned very abruptly and hasn't worked for us for months. It's unclear what story, if any, would have put Meek in the FBI's crosshairs. Well, not necessarily. It's been reported by several outlets. He was investigating Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan and then abruptly vanished. Now, here's the best part of the story. Rolling Stone says Meek has been charged with no crime, but independent observers believe the raid is among the first and quite possibly the first to be carried out on a journalist by the Biden administration. OK, well, uh, I would just like to point out James O'Keefe does exist. He was also raided by the FBI. But uh, here's the story, man. This is a troubling trend. Now, I don't know what happened to this guy. Okay, the report was that he was, he was investigating Afghanistan. Very, very bad day for Biden. And I'll, and I'll remind you, when you look at the aggregate polling, that's when Joe Biden went underwater. His approval rating was, 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 was higher than his disapproval. Afghanistan happened. He flipped. The Democrats right now, they're desperately trying to reverse that narrative and, and win back support. But the economy is just, it's beating them down. Then you get a guy who's working on this big story. Gone. Well, Rolling Stones is also reporting right now that he might have had classified information, and that's why the FBI raided him. But we have to understand that, that what, what's happening here is not out of the playbook out of the Democratic Party. When Joe Biden was vice president, the Obama administration terrified newsrooms just like they did weddings and hospitals all throughout the Middle East with their drone strikes. And Obama used the Espionage Act more than any other president before him to specifically put a record number of journalists and their sources in jail. So we have to understand here, this is the continuation of the Obama DOJ FBI that prosecutes people that want to, to do real journalism. They went after James O'Keefe. They probably went after this guy. We don't know all the details here, but he quit his job. He, he didn't publish his book and he disappeared. People can't find him. Of course, people are automatically, some people are going to go off and say, Oh, maybe they Michael Hastings to him, uh, which is another journalist that also died under the Obama administration, also had allegedly classified, during, classified information. During the Obama administration. During the administration. Yeah, while yeah. investigating. Who was he investigating? He was investigating a, a top general that yeah. was, uh, you know, that, that, that he was going to expose. And he came out and said, hey, you know, he tried to use his neighbor's car. He said they had people following him. So, so again, he what, said, what the Democrats are possible, what, what they could possibly do is unspeakable with what they already did with the Obama administration. Okay, what we know from the Obama administration is that more journalists and whistleblowers were charged with the, under the Espionage Act and other charges than all of the presidents, presidents combined. What we know about Michael Hastings is that who was he was was it Hayden? You, you want to Google no, this? No, it wasn't question? Hayden. It was another no. uh, top. He was uh, investigating general. some top general guy. And then one day he shows up to his neighbor's house saying he needs to borrow their car or something about he saw someone under his car tampering with it. The next thing we hear, John is, Brennan, Brennan, there John Brennan, go. CIA director, yep. John Brennan was being investigated. The next thing we hear is that he was speeding down Wilshire Boulevard uncontrollably and slammed into a tree and his car burst into flames. Yeah, like two in the morning. Yeah. So the one people were like, maybe he was drunk and he just depressed and suicidal and just hit the gas and just didn't let go. Other people are like, maybe they wired He went his to car. his neighbors and said, my car was <laughs> tinkered with. Can I use your car, please? Because someone was messing with my car. It's not the same. And yo, the neighbor yo. said no. Do you guys yeah. remember when uh, Seamus... Yeah, Freedom Tunes, that he, he produced a debunking left-wing uh, memes video. And there's this researcher who made the pyramid. It's the reverse pyramid of conspiracy theories. Have you seen this? I don't think I've seen that one. There's a, so this, this, this pyramid shows like 
on the bottom, it's conspiracy theories that are true. And it's like, you know, MK Ultra, it happened. We know the documents are declassified. And then at the top, it's like anti-Semitic point of no return. And the funny thing is, it says something like Epstein is true at the bottom. And then it says powerful uh, individuals trafficking children is considered a conspiracy theory. And it's like, bro, that's the same thing. Like the Epstein thing, that's what it is. Ghislaine Maxwell's in prison for trafficking minors. It's not a conspiracy theory anymore. She's been convicted. Now, you know, who was it? I'd love to see that list. But here's the funny thing. Like after something like that happens, one of my favorite stories is Chris, I think it was Chris Reagan tweeting that when Epstein dies, he gets into an Uber and the Uber driver turns around immediately and says, yo, that guy didn't kill himself. I like that's the that was the <laughs> cultural shock when that story dropped. So when you hear that a national security reporter, here's the story from the Daily Mail, check this out. ABC national security producer hasn't been seen since April when FBI mysteriously raided his house. Journalist was writing a book about Biden's disastrous withdrawal withdrawal from Afghanistan. He, he abruptly quits, tells the guy he's working the book with, I'm out, you know, I don't have anything to do with this. And now no one, his neighbors haven't seen him. His colleagues haven't heard from him. We actually, someone we work with, I'm going to keep the details, you know, vague because we're trying to investigate this, tried reaching out because they know him and they're like, yo, he's not responding. So uh, I don't know. But let me just tell you, the conspiracy theorists scored a whole bunch of points over the past couple of years. We are well past the point where we just dismiss these things as far-fetched. A journalist was raided by the FBI and went missing. James O'Keefe was raided by the FBI. His saving grace is that he's famous and people got their eye on him. But I wouldn't be surprised if something really crazy happened here. Is, something really crazy. I'm just realizing that this was in April. So has, has there been research to know, like, what's his family say? Like, where is he? Like, I mean, is the guy, like, truly missing from his family, friends, everyone? I mean, that point, His neighbors haven't changed. seen him, they're saying. Like, yeah. apparently they reached out to him. So that's, that, that's why we're here talking about it. Yeah. I'd because like to know what his weird. family has to say or if who they are. Family, yeah. yeah. Don't know. You would Don't think know. if he was married or had kids that they yeah. would have been at least vocal about it. And if they're or, not vocal <laughs> about it, then they're in on it. Or they're scared. Right. Yeah. Me meaning that they're in on it. Like they okay. know something. Well, look, happened. I mean, when the FBI shows up at your door, breaks it down and points a gun at your family member's head. I mean, that's a message right there. And when you do that to journalists, when you do that to people that, that whistleblow, when you do that, when, when people try to get accurate, truthful information to the general public, you're not on the good side here. I mean, I think it's pretty clear and obvious. We used to have journalists. We used to have whistleblowers. We used to have things like, you know, Watergate. We used to have, uh, there, there's another, you know, comment here that's an adult comment linked to, of course, a whistleblower that goes deep, uh, a part of someone's jugular. Uh, those situations, those scenarios, those individuals can exist under this administration, mainly because of just how brutal they are towards journalism. It's like, Tim, you mentioned that maybe he had classified information that well, I think Luke mentioned that. Mentioned Rolling that. Stone is, is yeah. reporting that, that there is a potential that he had classified information and was going to probably uh, blow the whistle on, on something even more nefarious to already a very nefarious, nasty story. And, and another thing that kind of boggles my mind is, you know, why are journalists puppeteering? Why are they cheerleading this administration that is literally punishing them, that is spreading fear in the newsroom, that is terrifying them from even doing their job. I, I don't understand it. Uh, I, I do on some levels, but the general public should be asking some serious questions. What's that that phenomenon where slaves will start to love their slave master? Stockholm yeah, syndrome? Yeah, Stockholm syndrome. It's like journalists are in a state of such shock and terror that they're being, the, 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 the government's spying on their, their the, like... I don't think most don't, journalists are afraid of this government. I think they're a little too cozy. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I it's well, I mean, no, 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 no. I, 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 I think... Technically, Ian's right. Journalists are in a state of fear. The people you're referring to, Seth, aren't journalists. They're, you know, Fair. government shills Fair. masquerading as journalists. So the people who are actual journalists, this is what happens to them. Yeah. You get raided by the FBI. I mean, look at James O'Keefe. The FBI raided his house. The whole thing is, is, is nonsense. And then the Rolling Stone has the nerve to be like, this could be the first time. It's like, bro. Yeah. The when, way they when, phrase that, among when people the point, first, what does that even or, mean? Or possibly the first. And when people point out James O'Keefe got raided, the response from all of these people on Twitter is, he's not a journalist. No, he is a journalist. James O'Keefe is. is a journalist. And he has news organizations defending him. These people don't like him personally. So they say he's not a journalist. But it's like, just because you don't like the things he writes. The same thing is true of Alex Jones. 
Guess what? Surprise, surprise. Alex Jones is a journalist. Oh, no. Now they're all angry saying, don't you dare conflate the work we do with Alex Jones. If you break down what they are legally doing and their protections. Yeah, Alex Jones is a journalist. Sorry, that's just a reality. But I got to tell you this. When you get these corporate shill, quote unquote, journalists that make fake news up, and claim things like Ian Crossland is a conservative, Whoa. and then have the nerve to insult Alex Jones? Oh, I, harumph, I say. I find it laughable. Shout out to Jezebel for writing that bizarre article, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was. Conservative commentator. We, we live Crossland. in an interesting society where people appreciate the government's class of ability to classify documents. If they didn't have that ability, we would have been overrun and conquered because we would have lost wars like World War II. You need secrecy. But at the same time, we also glorify journalists that like, expose the the corruption within the government by you know it maybe not receiving classified documents but i don't know how they well like julian assange for instance he, he received like those that was a classified video the uh what is it collateral murder where it shows the soldiers like just from a helicopter like gunning people down in civilians gunning civilians down and look what they do to assange yes and so we've got both dichotomies like there's heroes on you know you could and they're at odds but they're both on our side i just very strange uh, I think the U.S. government is full of criminals and corrupt psychopaths. And then you have people like Julian Assange who are like, I'm going to expose evil people. Right. Technically, he's a criminal. Like, he got classified information and revealed it. No, that he's was, not a criminal that, at all. Yeah, I don't think that was that, an evil that, journalist. That, yeah, it is, actually. He's protected by the First yeah. Amendment, and he's not even an American citizen. To, to receive and disperse classified information, yes. you're allowed to do that? The New York Times does it he's every a day. journalist. Yeah, there's whistleblower laws that protect individuals that come forward and say, hey, there was some wrongdoing in our government. Many yep. people tried to go through the official avenues and, and they, of course, were, were told to shut up. Well, he just can't have stolen the documents himself. But if yes. they're provided to him, he has the ability. Again, even like he, he said, that's what journalism, they do that all the time. But exactly. like, even if he knows they're stolen? Yes. I, uh, yes. So that's right. Like, I can't commit Trump's, the crime, but if someone else does it for me, then yes. I'm on the clear. If well, they didn't it direct you? them to. If they didn't now, direct them to. Yeah, right, right, right. right. You can't, right. You, you can't be, if, if you're a journalist and someone comes to you and says, I have a diary, you can be like, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they look at Trump's tax records. Uh, what's her name? Put uh, put them on Maddow? her show. Yes. I forgot about yep. her. How quick she uh, flies. <laughs> but yeah, she put them on her show and was heralded for it. Yeah. yeah they were cheering. I mean, this is really funny. There's um, some, some leftist organization filmed some Republican congressman or something under, undercover pretending to be a Trump supporter, saying we need pardons for the January 6th defendants. And he's like, well, we got to win the White House first. Mm -hmm. And they're all like, oh, we got him, we got him. And it's just like, and how is what James O'Keefe does not journalism? Like, you do this, the same thing, and then claim Veritas is, get that, it's partisan yep. BS. You know, what we need, I, I would say, probably the only real news organization in the country right now, it, okay, that's not fair, but the most prominent national level is Veritas. Yeah. And I say it's not fair. I wouldn't call any of the local news outlets, news organizations. I wouldn't call, uh, you call them news outlets. Let's go media, local media disbursement. The New York Times, please. Propaganda narrative garbage. The, 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 there's a new outlet that came out, Semaphore. And it's Ben Smith, formerly of BuzzFeed and the New York Times, along with a bunch of other people who I, I think are just terrible. But they're doing reporting now and they've done some interviews that are actually quite good. And one of them, is this guy, this opinion editor from the New York Times who got fired for publishing Tom Cotton's op-ed calling for the military to uh, you know, stop the riots. And he's basically like, they're trying to pander to progressives. They had an opportunity to speak out, to call it out and say, we're not here to pander to you, but they chose, we're gonna be Mother Jones on steroids or whatever. That's the New York Times, it's not news. It's not investigative journalism. There's like, when you talk about journalism, you talk about there's reporting where people are like, hey, I got a piece of paper, I'm gonna read it to you and report on what I saw. Then there's people that investigate. Investigative journalists are like, here's a piece of paper, I gotta figure out where it came from, who wrote it, and they'll do all this work behind the scenes to figure stuff out. That's Project Veritas, they're investigating. Now, New York Times, Kylie Chung from Jezebel, who wrote this weird article about me calling me conservative and misquoting me, is not an investigative journalist. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.